Okay, cool. Okay, so um, it's Halloween. We're in Vegas. Uh, this is a blockchain conference. So uh, I'm going to go out on the limb here, and uh, by show of hands, has anyone here not seen or read Harry Potter? Anyone? Perfect. Oh, okay. So for you, sir, uh, muggles are in Harry Potter are uh, people without magic skills. So we're going to borrow this term to distinguish ourselves, people with crypto powers, and those ordinary schmoes who don't know anything about it. And by the way, for these muggles, um, they do have an important part to play in the scheme of things. But before I get into it, uh, just let me tell you a tiny bit about myself. Um, so I was a part of uh, the founding team of a company called Rocket Play, uh, which built uh, a pretty successful social casino game called Lucky Play Casino, uh, which got eventually acquired by a company called AGS back in 2015. Now, over the years, I, was, I became more and more aware of uh, blockchain, te blockchain technology, but it wasn't until the coming out of the Ethereum blockchain and uh, innovations with uh, smart contracts that I, and kind of like a, a subsequent uh, innovation took, that took place with dApps such as CryptoKitties that I uh, started to get really excited about what this technology could mean for the gaming space. And then uh, fast forward to about a year and a half ago and with the coming out of the EOS blockchain, uh, my co-founders Dirk Luth, Money Onyxchain and I went on a mission to bring the benefits of blockchain technology to mass audiences through gaming. And starting with, uh, with Upland. Uh, and Upland is uh, a location-based virtual property trading game. Uh, people often describe it as kind of like Monopoly meets Pokemon Go on the blockchain. And uh, the reason we use blockchain for Upland is pretty straightforward. We want to create a credible, real-life economy that powers the game. An economy where people can enjoy uh, the concepts of true ownership an economy where people are free to trade the digital assets in the open market, an economy that people can liquidate their assets and exit the game if they choose to do so, an economy where all uh, transactions are secured and transparent on the blockchain, and uh, an economy that gives the innovation of the uh, ability to do frictionless and trustless exchange of values between the peers. And our, our hypothesis was, and still is, that if you take two similar games, in terms of game mechanics and playability. And you take one and you see that it has uh, a traditional pseudo economy where the operator owns all the digital assets. It does not allow trade or it does not al allow a path to liquidate digital assets. And you take, again, the same game, same capabilities, but with a real world economy behind it powered by blockchain. It will become a really easy choice for the player which game to play and invest their time, effort, and resources in. So, we embarked on our mission, and pretty soon we found out that for our addressable market, there are kind of like two types of players that span the spectrum of uh, blockchain savviness, uh, the cryptos and the muggles. And what's the difference between the two? So crypto here probably has invested uh, in, uh, in uh, several uh, tokens or blockchains. Uh, she has uh, several uh, wallets probably installed on her devices. Those wallets are connected uh, to identities of the blockchain. Uh, she knows about uh, blockchain technology, non-fungible tokens, the power of true ownership. Uh, she probably, maybe she played a game on blockchain, maybe she thought it would be funny to own a digital kitten on the blockchain. And then uh, Mr. Muggle here may have heard about cryptocurrencies in the news, maybe he bought Bitcoin on Coinbase when he was pushing 20K in the good old times, uh, but basically doesn't know a lot about the technology or what it means to have uh, true ownership on the blockchain. So it, it looks like a pretty straightforward call for us which market to pursue, right? But keep in mind that in order to run a successful casual game business model, we need to support uh, probably hundreds of thousands of daily active users, not, not 50, not 1,000, not 10,000. So we took, a look at, we took a look at the, uh, at the market size, obviously, of, of each market, and it's like a holy shit moment, right? So obviously, we need to have some kind of magic that would make blockchain technology accessible uh, for the muggles. And luckily, I do have my uh, um, EOS wizarding wand with me. And uh, together with my uh, trusted uh, uh, apprentice, Hermione, we're going to solve some roadblocks that, that are apparent here and come between muggles and mass adoptions. So let's start with the first one, onboarding. So anyone who played uh, a crypto game or um, uh, used a, a crypto dApp 
probably knows that in order, as a prerequisite to start playing the game, uh, you need to have uh, a, a, a pre-existing pre identity on the blockchain that is compliant with, with a DAP. So that means having installed a wallet that is compliant, probably having it connected to an identity, probably having it funded with a token native to the DAP that you're using. So by now, we probably lost 99% of muggle, of potential muggles to friction. So this won't fly. So Hermione, if you please do your magic. No problem, Dan. Off loss, friction loss, sign of off. Oh, okay, that worked. Perfect. So um, for us, uh, we man EOS enables us to manage uh, people's uh, blockchain accounts uh, for them with the elaborate permission scheme that it offers. So we can basically create accounts and link them to their Upland identities. And, uh, and those accounts are used only to manage Upland digital assets. But the way that we integrate our property wallet into our smart client uh, gives us the, op the option to still keep and adhere to the principles of security and decentralization of, of blockchain. So our users are left with a very familiar gaming interface where the only thing they need to do to onboard is use their emails and passwords uh, and that wallet can follow them cross devices and cross platforms, especially also relevant for mobile gaming. Okay, for, so for the second uh, uh, roadblock. So you probably know that uh, to maintain pub public blockchains, you need to be able to compensate uh, the, node, the nodes that are actually doing the work for the blockchain. So uh, that means probably transaction fees. And uh, if you're on a blockchain that does not have this feature, that doesn't compensate the nodes, it probably means you're not on a public blockchain. So there is no true uh, benefit of decentralization. Uh, but then think about it. Think about a scenario for casual games, very common, where people need to come and collect their daily rewards. Uh, so does it make sense that a muggle would need to pay 10 cents to collect their uh, uh, 1,000 coins daily and then get hit with a paywall? That probably won't fly with the muggles. So, Hermione? No problem, Idan. Enable us, free us, transactious. Okay, that's more like it. So, uh, EOS has a very uh, innovative uh, uh, staking model where it allows us as game operators to stake resources uh, to, the, to our players. And basically, that enables us to uh, take into account those costs and compile them into our business model. Uh, so, uh, basically, we can treat these costs, these blockchain costs, the same way we would treat our AWS backend cost, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and then the user is left with a very familiar interface that does not require any frictions with trans transaction fees. Okay, now, moving on to the next one. Um, so, again, for models to be able to play uh, blockchain games, they, they have to have uh, uh, an option to, to use fiat money, so US dollars or euros, or whatever currency run by state, as a means to cash in and cash out of the game. So that means that the model doesn't have to worry about owning Ethereum or any non-standard point of, uh, uh, of payment. And moreover, uh, we need to supply the ability to use fiat in very standard ways, so that means using uh, credit cards or in a purchases on app stores, etc. So uh, this was a tricky one. I hope uh, Hermione remembers her training here. Be gone us, sheeps and cows us. Welcome us, Ben Franklin. <laughs> okay, so uh, again, um, the thing with blockchains is that they don't, nowadays at least, they don't have a native way uh, to kind of like have a gateway between fiat and their native token for exchange of value. Now, this is, uh, it is a slight technical problem, but it's, that one is solvable. The bigger problem here is regulation. So if you're running a casual game and you want to uh, address the US markets and other highly uh, regulated markets worldwide, you will need to comply with regulatory issues such as anti-money anti laundering rules and SEC laws. And uh, the way we solve it in Upland is, uh, again, EOS is a very, very powerful blockchain. It allows us uh, to have uh, advanced features such as multi-sig, multi-signatures on transactions. I don't know if you've heard about them. But basically, we can take a token like our OPEX tokens, which, which is our virtual currency, 
And then, uh, and by the way, Apex token is derived from the EOS IO token itself, but it does require our signature as well as the player signature in order to make transactions. And that allows us to keep Apex as a strictly utility token that is not tradable outside of the, of the platform of Appland. Now, by having complied with that type of regulation, we are able to offer our players the ability to take their digital assets that they acquired with their Apex tokens and then sell them out, on, sell them off on our platform for fiat currency as means to cash out of the game. Okay, next, this is a pretty common one. So, Mr. Muggle here just got uh, hit with a paywall just to start playing the game. Now, obviously, this doesn't work. You need to hit the, the, our, your players with value proposition before they monetize. Okay, so this is a really, really hard one. Let's see if I'm, Hermione gets it. I want us to play around us with your gamers before I give you my fucking hard-earned money. Uh, okay, I, I, I did not know they dropped F-bombs in, uh, in spells these days, so... Uh, and, um, and again, the way we, we solve this problem... And, and by the way, keep in mind, getting a real-life economy in a game is really, really hard. And it becomes especially even harder with casual games where Usually, most of your play you would have lost most of your players after one day of playing, or maybe max a week. And then, keep in mind, in a, in a real-life economy, every token has a value, every digital asset has a value. And you want to avoid a situation where you create holes in your economy uh, yeah, that, that, that fall under lapsed players. And the way we solve this in Upland is by distinguishing between visitors to Upland and citizens of Upland. And what's the difference between the two? They both get pretty much the same gaming experience, but there's a subtle difference. Visitors are linked to a, a pool of EOS accounts that Upland holds the private keys for, so they don't enjoy the power of true ownership just yet. And this enables us to give a path of two potential outcomes. First outcome, a visitor comes in, engages with the game, and he mo maybe he monetizes, maybe uh, he just keeps on, to the point that we deem them uh, valuable to the ecosystem. At that point, we move them to their own unique EOS account. Uh, we lose the private keys, we lose the ability to touch the digital assets, and they enjoy uh, true ownership. On the other hand, if the visitor uh, st uh, lapses and doesn't come back to the game, because we own the private keys for their account, we're able to recycle the assets back into the economy and, and use them for, for the game. And then finally, for the, la for the, uh, for the last roadblock, um, so, when we communicate our value proposition to our players, it, it's really easy to communicate to cryptos things like, you know, talking about distributed ledgers and non-fungible tokens and private keys and the technology behind it. Uh, but then, this won't work with the muggles. They don't have a clue. So, for the last time, Hermione. Jargon expelliarmus. Say that again, us? Okay. So uh, we, we did have some uh, early marketing tests, and what we found out is, is that muggles do react uh, to, uh, to more simple messages uh, that use metaphors to explain the benefits of blockchain technology, and better served with an emotional twist. So things like, join the ownership revolution, or don't just play for fun, play to own, or if you, if you can't sell it, you don't really own it, seems to resonate with our players, and early tests are, are, are showing very positive results. So it looks like with a little bit of innovation a lot of, and a lot of EOS pixie dust, we were able to make uh, muggle accessible blockchain technology a reality. But the fact is, I do wish I had the magic wand that I could wave and just uh, have all muggles instantly realize the benefits of blockchain. Uh, but, I mean, that, was a, that would have really made my life easier. But I'm not in the business of easy. We're in the business of innovation, and innovation is hard, and market education is even harder. But I think that in the next couple of years, we're going to see a lot of projects break that glass ceiling, and it's going to be fascinating. So watch this space closely. And then finally, Upland is currently in a closed beta, but if you want to see what we're up to, we have a special uh, access code here for, uh, for the Vegas uh, World Conference. Um, and uh, we're giving away chips that would, if you scan their barcode, would load you up with 5,000 Apex to get you started with the game. So if you want to check out what we're up to, uh, please, uh, please do that. And feel free to grab myself, Dirk, or Money. We're the three co-founders of, of, of Upland. Uh, grab us for a chat. Thank you.